Hey, welcome back. Welcome to the Victory Team. Today I'm, I'm excited to present a new series. This is the How To Series. And um, we're going to start on how to deal with emotions. <sighs> especially the negative emotions. It is the most requested Bible study. And unfortunately, it's probably the least taught in our churches. We don't know how to deal with our emotions ourselves, and we can't help other people. But we're going to try. Believe me, I want to help you. I think I can help you. I'm not a psychiatric person. Um, I don't necessarily believe in some of their methods. I am a Bible believer, and I believe that the answers that we have, that we need, we have. They're in the Bible. And uh, join with us. This is the introduction, but hang in there. Emotions are part of our being. It's part of who we are. It's part of our makeup. We are not robots. <laughs> Some of us express... <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Some of us express ourselves more openly than others. Some of us are more reserved and so on. But we're all emotional beings. That's what we are. It's part of us. I have good news that God, our Creator, also has emotions. We don't have to deny where we have emotions or we get emotional. Because God also has these things. He has anger and compassion and hate and jealousy, love, uh, <laughs> sorrow, and, and more. God allows us to be like Him. He created us to be like Him. And this way we partake in the feelings, the attributes of God. And at this point, when we include God, we're leaving modern psychiatric, the industry of modern psychiatric, and we're looking at our entire being, all that we are. We were created by God and Adam who is the original man, he was created, it says so, in God's image. And uh, we, this is passed down. He's like the forefather way back. However, unlike God, our own emotions, if misunderstood, if not communicated well, they can eventually control us. And that's not their purpose. They can steer us, they can alert us, but they're not to control us. And when we're uncontrolled and misunderstood, our emotions drive us into trouble and sometimes into sin. Tears and pain and regret are often the end of emotions that were not dealt with, they were misunderstood. I really want to help you. I, I want to help you to have a good life. The question is, how do we allow our spirit to communicate? And we're going to talk about this, but emotions do that. Emotions are based in our spirit. It's the spirit out. It's communicating. How do we allow that to, communication to happen without getting hurt, without being confused? We begin by understanding our design. This creation of God called you. <laughs> and it's a wonderful creation. It says of Jesus, and I quote, He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. That's out of John 11, verse 33. Jesus groaned in the spirit. The emotions that Jesus felt were the result of his spirit communicating. In this case, 
His spirit was communicating something that was troubling him on the inside, and it's conveyed outward. So too, our emotions are our inward man, our spirit, expressing uh, our inner alignment or disalignment. I'll explain what I mean by that. And I used a chiropractic example. Yeah, let me show you another example where the spirit, where the emotions begin in the spirit. Isaiah 54, verse 6, For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. I have a short story. When I was in Bible school, I was working in a factory in Rochester, New York. And I came home, and I don't know what happened. I don't know what it is. Just life. And I would read my Bible laying on the floor. I just like, I lay on a rug and I read. I'm, a, I'm one of those types of people. And when I tried to get up after some reading, I could hardly move. My back was so sore. I had done some lifting where I was at work. I couldn't move. Finally, I got to a phone and I called the neighbors in the next townhouse. They were girls that went to the Bible school where I went to. And they came over and they helped me. I mean, I was just helpless, just stuck on the floor. Well, with their help, they got me off into a car. And slowly I got into a chiropractor that they recommended. I had never been to a chiropractor before. And I went in all bent up and hurt. And my, I was misaligned. I didn't know it. I, I just knew I felt pain. And when I left that office, I'm not putting an ad for chiropractic. They, they have their place, as do other medical doctors. But when I left that office, whoa, I was a new man. I could stand up straight. I could walk. I walked out on my own power. What that chiropractor did was he noticed there was a misalignment somewhere in my backbone, and he clunk, 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 he realigned me. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get into some realignment. When we feel especially negative emotions, there's some misalignment in our spirit. I'm not talking about the flesh. I'm not talking about bones. I'm talking about the inner man. There's some, something's not according to the design that God would have. And it's communicating to you there's something going on. It's like a, if you own a car or even a motorcycle, and most people do, you have on your dashboard warning lights. Hopefully you don't have them on your dashboard. You might be driving along and this light comes on. It's a, it's a, it's a warning to you. It's, in this case, in the illustration here in the slides, it's the battery. Oh, your battery's running low. And uh, the driver's alerted. It's like your emotion. That warning light is like your emotion. It's there. It's telling you, the driver, the owner, we have a problem here. You, you probably ought to look at this problem. You ought to correct it. And you're driving along and that light comes on. Well, you have a couple of choices. You can, uh, you know, if it's a noise, if it's an audible bell or some alarm like that, you can turn up the radio and drown it out. Or you can take some paper or mask and you can cover the dashboard so you can't see the light, but it's still there. Hopefully you would use a little wisdom and say, oh, that's a warning. And you address that problem. Negative emotions in your life are simply more, no more than that warning light coming on saying, something's not right. We should correct this. Please don't go on. If the driver ignores the light, it doesn't get better. When you ignore your negative emotions, they don't go away. They'll fester and cook. Actually, they'll be exaggerated. If we mask them like it's so common, we take drugs or alcohol, or we even lie to ourselves and say, I'm okay, I'm fine. But really, we're not. And we're only lying to ourselves. The problem is there. In fact, it's probably worse. It's screaming at us, help, help. We need some attention here. 
So how? How can I understand my emotions? And this is what people ask in so many words. How can I overcome these negative feelings? Uh, I, some people are plagued with some negative feelings, maybe bitterness, anger, for years. Please, I want to help you. I'm, by the time you watch this, I'll be 62 years old. 62 years in, uh, in life. And I know a little Bible, and I know a little bit about people, and maybe there's something we can share with you to help you put the pieces together so that you can break through. We are the victory team. We want to give you a victory in your life. Please stay with us. And if you can, would you subscribe? That would be, that would be great. That way we keep in touch. We'll keep you up to date in, in each week that we upload the video. And now our sponsor. Looking for that perfect greeting card? We've got you covered. Introducing UVitStore.com. UVIT Store was created by a team of American and Vietnamese Christians to help at-risk youth learn a skill set and live in a safe environment. Now, nine years and thousands of cards later, we continue to supply high-quality cards and provide a safe vocation for young ladies. So if you're looking for the card that gives back twice, don't look any further than UVITstore.com. All right, we'll see you again. Here's, here's your assignment. As I want you to, we're closing, we're going to meet again next week, but I want you to get a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, you need to get a Bible. I use a King James Bible. I, for English speaking people, there's reasons, but get a Bible, get a Bible you can trust and get a notepad and a pen and start taking down notes. And we'll, we're going to go to class and we're going to learn together. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Thanks.